when we sequenced, we sequenced in short little bits. And this is really the technology that allows us to sequence in huge long pieces and put them together like a jigsaw puzzle in the right way. And so portions of the genome where those pieces were hard to fit until you got those big long strands, we've now been able to correctly put in the right pieces and assemble that whole jigsaw puzzle. It's pretty incredible. I don't think that us, us lay people really understand um, the breadth and how important this is. I think we will in the future when things start happening and we can see medicines and things and treatments for uh, formerly incurable diseases. Um, let's go back to Susanna. Um, beautiful little girl. Um, she is your patient. Um, how does a genetic disorder like she has happen? So in her particular case, as her dad was saying, it wasn't inherited from her mother or father. It spontaneously started, and she was the first one in her family with this. And lots of people will say to me, Dr. Chung, we've got clean genes in our family. This can't be genetic. But in fact, this is one of the ways in which it can be genetic. There are others, but an important way. Um, Susanna's condition, though, is devastating. I met Susanna several years ago, and she has gone through a progressive decline. And so she's literally fighting for her life. And that's what happens with some of these conditions, and the hope that having a diagnosis will put us now towards a treatment and towards maybe even a cure for some people. So the first and most important piece of this puzzle in helping Susanna is you got to figure out what it is she has, correct? Absolutely. You don't know which way to march. Are you going left? Are you going right? Are you going up? Are you're going down, you have to have that diagnosis. Without the diagnosis, you're wandering in the wilderness. But with a diagnosis, all of a sudden now you have a better roadmap ahead. What can you expect? What can you prevent? What medications work? All of a sudden, you now have potentially the opportunity for genetic therapies. Now, those genetic therapies aren't a reality for most of these conditions yet, but a lot of scientists are working really hard on that, and I'm very optimistic in the next 10 years, many of them will be treatable. I was just going to put you on the hot seat to ask the question that I think any parent or any person, really, even if you don't have the genetic disease, um, when, when, white, might me, white, when might we see um, a cure or a treatment that is really um, impactful for people? So I don't know. I'm not great at prognostication, but I will give you an example that I think is remarkable. There's a, a genetic condition that used to be, past tense, used to be the most common genetic cause of death for children less than two years of age, a condition called spinal muscular atrophy. Mm -hmm. We do now have gene therapy, a one and done, and babies that are diagnosed at birth from newborn screening, diagnosis, treatment, now hopefully normal, healthy lives thereafter. So there are some success stories. They're small in number, but there are things for sickle cell disease, thalassemia, other conditions. And it's one of these things, once the technology works, there's going to be a breakthrough where it's not just sort of incrementally one by one, but it's going to be blocks of hundreds of conditions that can be treated by the same technology. So that's what we're all sort of at the edge of our seat waiting for, is that those technologies will safely and effectively now unlock answers for millions of people.